fully baked and ready to serve. That's how Washington insiders describe the legislative effort to replace the notorious FDA deeming regulations, an effort being led by Republican Congressman Duncan Hunter. As RegWatch reported last month, a major push is underway to repeal the deeming regs. However, fallout from the health care debacle appeared to have stalled the effort. But instead, the failure to replace Obamacare delivered an important lesson. Repealing the FDA deeming regulations will not work unless there's comprehensive vaping legislation ready to take its place. And that's exactly what Congressman Hunter says his bill is ready to do. And the plan is to introduce it in Congress next week. The Hunter legislation just cleared the House Office of the Legislative Council and is ready for release. Titled the Cigarette Smoking Reduction and Electronic Vapor Alternatives Act, the bill removes vaping products from the definition of tobacco that's in the Tobacco Control Act. And it establishes an independent regulatory framework that enshrines vaping as a tool for harm reduction. The bill also changes the name of the Center for Tobacco Products at the FDA to the Center for Tobacco Products and Harm Reduction. And it authorizes the Secretary of HHS to undertake a detailed assessment to compare the risks of smoking cigarettes to vaping and other nicotine alternatives. Finally, the bill sets industry standards for e-liquid and device manufacturing, with special attention paid to battery safety, including short circuit protection, discharge monitoring, and serial or lot number tracking for all devices. Earlier this week on a conference call with industry reps discussing the Electronic Vaping Coalition's repeal strategy, Congressman Hunter shared the timeline for the introduction of his replacement bill. We uh, separate vaping from the Tobacco Control Act. It's, it's, it's that simple. Um, we, we, we take away the liquid, we take away the devices, and we create our own set of standards. But I think we've got everybody on board. For the most part, there's always going to be outliers. But we have enough people to get on board now to where we have mo momentum so that we're not just doing the Cole Bishop bill, the Cole Bishop amendment. If we have an appropriations off omnibus, we're actually going to have a deal and replace language that everybody can look at that separates vaping from cigarettes. This regulatory framework that, that we're going to introduce that could be the, the basis for vaping for the next 50 years and, and creates a, a strong base point so that we can innovate and we can change it and allow it to adapt to where the market wants to go. So from my understanding, we're going to introduce this next week. We're, we're back in session next week. From, and, and then it's going to be out there and we'll be able to start getting people support for it, going to the entire vaping community and saying, this is what we're fighting for. And, and, and as that is laid out as the future of vaping and the regulatory framework going forward that allows it to grow and thrive as, as an industry, I think we start getting people piling on. With the Hunter Replace legislation ready to drop next week, the focus now turns to repealing or suspending either all of or portions of the deeming regulations before the onerous and costly product listing deadline kicks in at the end of June. So it's basically all hands on deck for the entire vaping community as industry and advocacy groups like the VTA, CASA, Safada, EVCA and CVIA USA all rally support across multiple tracks whether that be for the Hunter legislation, the Cole Bishop Amendment, or by organizing call-in campaigns to pressure key political leaders and Trump cabinet members for regulatory relief. The EVCA is one group treading some unique ground. It's launched a legal effort to force repeal by demonstrating that the FDA failed to follow the legal process of what's called coordination, which requires federal agencies to coordinate with local levels of government before implementing new rules and regs. Hearings begin next week in Wisconsin on behalf of the Village of Heartland and the Johnson Creek Vapor Company. Also breaking news this week is the announcement by the Senate Health, Education, Labor and Pensions Committee that it would vote next week on President Trump's pick, Dr. Scott Gottlieb, to lead the Food and Drug Administration. Dr. Gottlieb's confirmation by the full Senate for FDA commissioner is expected to sail through, which could be very good news for the vaping industry as Dr. Gottlieb, in his confirmation hearing earlier this month, articulated strong support for tobacco harm reduction. In areas where there's an inherent, obvious, and seemingly unavoidable risk related to certain consumer products, whether it's combustible tobacco or dangerously addictive opioid drugs, we have the opportunity to help consumers move to less risky alternatives. This owes to the foresight of Congress, 
and envisioning pathways to reduce harm as an animating principle in FDA regulation. I know what's at stake here. People's lives are literally on the line when it comes to the decisions that FDA makes in its oversight and its enforcement of Congress's laws. And the American people deserve to trust that the agency is led in an impartial manner, guided only by the science that informs its work and an abiding faith to the public health. That's the mandate by which I would lead this agency. Joining us today to discuss the details behind the Hunter Replace legislation and Dr. Gottlieb's nomination for FDA Commissioner is Larry Flick, a government affairs consultant in Washington, D.C. and lobbyist for the American E-Liquid Manufacturers Association. Larry, thanks for coming on the show. You've been with AIMSA now for over a year developing strategies to overturn the deeming regulations. Do you think President Trump's election is having a positive impact on that effort? It is. Um had Secretary Clinton won, um, her policies at the FDA would have been a continuation of what the Obama FDA was doing. And um, the chances of getting any real uh, reform would be minimal. Larry, many vapors had high hopes following the president's election, but with all of the turmoil surrounding his presidency and with the defeat of his attempt to repeal Obamacare, those hopes seem to be waning. Everybody likes to put their own spin on it. What I think, with regard to vaping at least, um, repealing or suspending the deeming regulation, uh, it won't happen until the FDA commissioner gets confirmed. Then, then the effort to uh, get executive action on the deeming regulation by suspending the deadlines uh, or postponing uh, implementation, that will begin in earnest at that point. Larry, do you believe the president's pick for FDA commissioner understands the value of vaping as a tool for tobacco harm reduction? We're confident that Dr. Gottlieb understands this, that he's a, he's a physician, he's a trained uh, medical scientist, he's worked at FDA as de deputy commissioner, Based on what he said at his hearing and things he's written, um, he, he's doing this for the right reasons. This isn't just pure politics. Larry, Dr. Gottlieb also has direct experience working with the vaping industry. Is that not correct? He does. In fact, it was not widely known, but he had a position with a company named Cure, a vaping company, um, which he had a board position and uh, an investment in. It's important to note that Dr. Gottlieb has properly disclosed his investments and has promised to divest himself of those interests within 90 days of his confirmation. Let's quickly turn to the replace effort. And for our viewers, you can expect a RegWatch interview with Congressman Hunter to be released shortly. Finally, Larry, you played a role in crafting the Hunter legislation. What do you think is the most important aspect of the bill? Well, the most important thing is that it takes vapor products out of the tobacco products category. And uh, that, that's where the debate has to start. We're trying to reform the culture of the Center for Tobacco Products. We're not gonna increase the number of people that work there under this legislation or give them more money. The idea there is that the mission isn't just to get people off of tobacco products, which is how the center views its mission now. The mission will be moving forward how do we get people to get off of cigarettes and step down the ladder toward uh, less harmful products? This is philosophical, this is scientific, this is common sense. Well, that's it for this edition of RegWatch. Before you head off, please like us on Facebook and don't forget to follow us on Twitter. For RegulatorWatch.com, I'm Brent Stafford.